Welcome everyone to Jail Tech Broadcast. This is going to be my quick video on my top five 4K monitors of 2015. Yes, 2015 is not over, but I wanted to get this up because I've been looking around at 4K monitors. A lot of people have questions about them. And I just wanted to go through actually my personal top five of monitors that I would actually choose. Uh, a lot of it's based on budget value, uh, what you actually get in the monitor. So that being said, let's jump in. The first thing I want to mention is a few honorable mentions and my overall background of why I was looking at 4K. 4K is really going to be the future of monitors here in the upcoming, I would say the next year or two. And the displays have came down enough in price to where it actually warrants actually buying one. And a monitor that we keep around for five or six years, I've had mine for five plus now. It's an old 1440p Dell IPS monitor that I've had for a long time. So that being said, the first I will mention is these monitors have to be released right now. I do know that there's four or five monitors that are getting ready to come out probably towards the end of the year that I didn't include, mainly because they're not out yet. So the couple honorable mentions, these, is, these are monitors that I would rec recommend for anyone that's doing professional work. Our first is going to be the LG 31MU67. This is the only actually true 4K monitor out there. Uh, a lot of uh, 4K monitors are, are uh, not quite actually 4K, they're like the Ultra HD, which is a little bit below that, but this is actually a 10-bit panel, which most people aren't gonna be able to actually take advantage of because they don't have the graphics cards to use it. You're gonna need a professional Quadro graphics cards to be able to take that 10-bit panel and push those colors to that max. And this monitor is well over $1,000. I see it on sale. Uh, for about $1,100, sometimes $1,000, but it generally runs about $1,200. Uh, uh, but $1,000, if you can find it on sale, that's really expensive for a monitor. That's cost for most people's systems. So that's why it's an honorable mention. Same thing with the ASUS uh, PA328Q. This is one of their newer uh, pre-calibrated 4K monitors, but again, it's over $1,200. It's extremely expensive does cover 100% of the sRGB color gamut, and it's really made for professionals, people that really, I mean, you really have to be using this thing daily for professional work. If you're just using it to game or, uh, you know, edit some videos or some photos here and there, it's not going to be worth it. So let's jump into number five. First is the Asus XB280HK. This is a 28-inch, uh, actually, G-Sync TN. 4K panel, and I threw this G-Sync one in there mainly because it gets such good reviews. G-Sync is not something that personally I'm interested in because my 4K monitor, if I ever had one, would actually probably be used for more professional or productivity work. Uh, but if you're looking for that, you have an NVIDIA card, this is the monitor I would get. Yes, it's TN, but I've actually seen this monitor personally at a micro center, and it actually looks really well, especially for a TN panel. Uh, if you're used to regular old IPS, maybe 1080p panel, it's going to look much better than that. Everything just looks crisp and sharp. Viewing angles aren't the best, but if you're looking at it straight on, it actually looks really good. So if your main focus is gaming, this is the one that I would actually personally get. It's running about $650, so you're paying that premium for that G-Sync, which I believe is a couple hundred dollars extra on top of what the monitor costs. That being said, let's get into number four. It is the ASUS PV278Q. This is a PV is more of the professional brand, but this is a TN 28 inch panel uh, 4K. Uh, it's a pro quality, build quality at least, and overall the TN panel, it, it looks really good. I will mention that I've, asked, I've seen it in person, play around with it a little bit. The viewing angles are a little off, and I have read a couple reviews about some of the monitors have a some backlight bleeding in them. Uh, that's something to keep in mind. Again, it has a three-year warranty, and it runs one of the cheapest monitors on here, about $399 to $475. Currently, you can get it for $368 on Amazon, but I've seen it as low as $400, especially if you look around for it. I've seen a couple refurbished ones for $350 over on Newegg. Not sure how long they were there, but I have seen a few. So that's gonna be my number four monitor. For model number three, I'm actually gonna go with the Dell P2715Q. And this uh, is a cheaper IPS monitor, 27 inches, uh, comes with three-year warranty, covers 99% of the sRGB color gamut, so it's great for professional work. May not be the best for gaming, there may be a little bit of shadowing. I haven't read a whole lot of reviews about it, except for there's a minor issue with earlier models that sometimes the display, you have to turn it on and off a few times or unplug it to get it to turn on. So that's kind of a glitch that I'm hoping Dell's actually worked through. Uh, Dell makes really nice high quality monitors that they plan on you using for a long time. That's why they put that three-year warranty on there. 
I am really loyal to Dell because I've had great success out of this monitor. So that's why I put it at the number three and the price point. Uh, it's 450 right now, I believe, uh, through, uh, I don't know if it was B&H or the other photo store, but 450 to $520 is a pretty easy target for this monitor. And I only see it coming down in price. $400 should be the next, probably the next uh, price drop in it. So number two, this actually monitor was actually just released and it is the LG 27MU67. This is a 27 inch uh, IPS 4K monitor and it also comes with FreeSync. So if you're running AMD, this is the monitor for you. It is, I've seen it for $450 on NCIX US. Right now it's running about uh, $520 on Amazon, 550 in other places. So keep that in mind if you're looking for a monitor like this, but this is personally what I would look for, especially if you're running AMD and you're doing any type of maybe secondary gaming or even primary gaming on it, because you're gonna be able to use that technology um, for that price point, it's difficult not to not to get this modern. I, I'm pretty sure it comes with the three-year warranty, so that's something that they're they're putting behind this panel because it's actually good good quality panel. It covers 99% of the sRGB color gamut, so it's going to be great for any, anything you need. And for that price point, that would probably be uh, the 27 inches is the only reason why it's number two. 27 inches is a little small, I think, for 4K. Mainly because I've seen my number one uh, 4K monitor in person in my eyes, and that is the Acer B326HK. This is a 32 inch IPS uh, 4K monitor, and the price point right now is $800, but I have seen it as low as $615 before. I've seen it as low as that twice, uh, and there's a couple of times it's been for $650 on Amazon. $615 was on Newegg with a code. But 32 inches is the sweet spot, I think, for 4K. I've seen it in person. I've actually played around with it a lot at my local Micro Center. They have a decent amount of 4K displays there. And it is what I would pick out of anything else. Any, any other 4K monitor, for one, the price point is a little lower than some of the pro-grade 10-bit panels that I put in my honorable mention. But that is what I'd pick up. Uh, I'd wait for it to go on sale, maybe for, for six, $650. Uh, it may come down a little bit in price. It's got a pro build quality. It's built like a tank. It really is. It's a nice, nice build quality display. Uh, and that 32 inches, you wouldn't think that four to five inches would make a difference, but it really does on 4K. It makes it a whole lot easier with scaling. Uh, you can set it back a little bit. It just does a whole lot better, I think. And it, you can get by probably using one, one uh, monitor if you go with that uh, 32 inch. So that's it guys. Yes, there are a few, a few more monitors coming out here in the future. There's a few ultra wides, but that's not really something I wanted to do in this video. So those are my top five 4K monitors of 2015 as of today. Let's say third quarter, because that's about what we're finished at. That's it guys. If you guys have any questions, definitely let me know. I've played around with almost all these monitors a, a pretty decent amount at the Micro Center, and they're all pretty great display depending on what your needs are. That being said, that's it guys. I'll see you guys next time and have a good day.